Hey, God bless everybody. I want to share an experience that I had. Of course, life is filled with experiences, and I tend to use mine as teachable moments, not only for myself, but for those who are under the realm of my influence. Sometimes, and I guess I'm going to topic this, prophets in a faith crisis, because you can be a prophet, or any other believer for that matter, but I'm going to specifically talk about a prophet, because prophets are expected to believe God, period. Like, how can you um, release a word that's going to, uh, alter the course of a person's life if you're struggling with your own belief system. So this is why for many prophets it takes time to develop that um, gifting or to uh, mature and, and um, grow up in that, in that type of ministry because you're going to encounter like so many levels of faith crises to develop your faith. If that makes sense, you're going to you're going to have experiences in your life where things just don't appear to work out. And then you've got to trust God to see that thing come to fruition and manifest the way that he intends it. So here was my experience. I had um, received the text message and person now on good terms. So it has nothing to do with this individual at all. I don't want anybody to get that twisted. The person and I on good terms. But they were asking for something that I didn't feel I had the capacity to support, okay? They were asking for something from me that I didn't feel I had to listen, that I didn't feel I had the capacity to support. And so when um, I looked at it and listen, immediately my heart sank. My heart sank and I was like, God, you know, how, here's it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay this out and be very vulnerable. How am I gonna do this? You know, I know I have to. Um, I can't get away from it. There's no, you know, there's no escape route. This, I've got to go through this one, right? I got to walk this all the way out. And so I'm like, God, how do I, what, what, what do I do? Like, I can't say no. I can't say I can't. I've got to do this. And so I, my heart sank and I felt a spirit of discouragement come upon me and a spirit of um, like dismay, a defeatist spirit. And I just put my phone down and like, y'all, without like within moments, you know how the Bible says in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, like in a moment, I went from feeling strong in the Lord, you know, I'm, I'm all right to feeling like, man, it, it was like this arrow came and it pierced me. Right. You know how we're supposed to put on the whole arm of God. This arrow came through and it pierced me. And so I, I put the phone down and I just kind of sat there for a moment because, you know, one of the first things that happens when discouragement sets in is you get quiet. Right. Because now <laughs> you get quiet because you're worrying. Let's just put that out there. You're worrying and you're trying to figure out how you're going to do it, because that's exactly what I did. I started trying to figure out, OK, well, maybe I'll do this and maybe I'll do it that way. Maybe. I'll... And then all of a sudden, I thank God for the Holy Ghost. Y'all, I heard the Holy Ghost say, stop. It's already done. And it was like he arrested my wandering mind. Am I speaking to anybody? The spirit of God arrested my wandering mind and brought me back to myself. Come on, y'all, because that's not who I am. I'm a person of faith. I believe in God. I believe that he can do all things according to his word shall be. And so for me to struggle with that one request, it, it, it was it was contrary to my character. It was definitely contrary to the character of our God. And it went contrary. It conflicted with scripture. And so immediately the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit said, it's already done. And he arrested my wandering mind and brought me back to myself. And so when I was, um, was kind of meditating about it, I was like, man, I had a faith crisis, right? You know, as a prophet, sometimes you have a faith crisis. And what you've got to realize that it doesn't define your inability to believe God in anything else. Like, I can still believe God. I still do believe God, right? Um, I went on from there believing God for some things. But it doesn't define you as a person who does not uh, believe God or who doesn't have faith in God. But I think it, it, I think it will wake you up to the reality that there are still faith challenges out there that some of us, me included, um, are going to have to grow through, not go through it. We're going to have to grow through it so that we can continue to believe God for greater things. That thing that was presented toward me, I felt like it was bigger than my ability to handle. I felt like that was bigger than me. It was bigger than my ability. It was bigger. You know what I'm saying? It was just bigger. But God reminded me he's bigger. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I thought about the prophet John. The Bible said he was the greatest prophet that ever lived, right? 
because he he was the forerunner for Jesus Christ, number one. But remember how he had a faith crisis when he was preaching. This man was baptizing men and women and, and, and preaching the, God, the message of repentance, right? And then all of a sudden, remember the warfare he went through with the religious folk? Um, and he started wondering, is he the one or is, am I to expect another? Like something happened in his mind. And so it brings you to reason, like, how can you go from preaching Jesus, repent, repent, for the kingdom of God is near? How can you go from that to baptizing people, preaching in the river, Jordan? How can you go from that place of strong faith to go and tell, he sent his disciples to find out, are you the one or shall I expect another? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it happened. And then he went on, he grew through that and went on and, and, and had the confrontation with Herod and so forth. So, and Elijah had the same thing. This man called fire from heaven, swallowed up, amen, a watery, uh, 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 praise God, uh, uh, altar, pagan altar, uh, you know, commanded rain. And you mean to tell me you're running from a devil? <laughs> you're running from a devil, amen. He had a faith crisis. This man ran, left his armor bearer, and went straight up the mountain to hide and ask God to take him. He didn't want to just hide in the earth room. He wanted to hide, period. He wanted to be gone. And so, and God was like, what are you doing here? And I felt like that's what the Holy Spirit was saying to me. What are you, girl? <laughs> what are you doing? No, we, it's already done. Why are you worried about something that's already done? What you're looking for is already provided. You just need to tap into it and call it. You need to manifest it. Who are you? What's going on with it? Where, where are you, right? Like the Lord said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And sometimes God will have to ask you, what are you doing here? And here may not necessarily be a geographical place like it was with Elijah. Here may be a spiritual place. My spiritual place was a place of defeatism, discouragement, disappointment, being overwhelmed, and why me? <laughs> and God said, why are you here? You don't belong here. I didn't come back. Let me arrest that wandering mind and put you back where you belong. So I want to... Uh, you know, use that, my own story, being vulnerable, because sometimes some leaders, I'm not one of those, but they won't tell you that they struggle with certain things. They won't tell you that they're battling certain things. They won't tell you that, you know, they've had to grow through a situation or God is still working on them. They won't tell you that because they want you to look at them to think that they are the closest ones to God. But let me tell you something. If you're a real leader, you are touchable. And I don't mean everybody should have access to you. What I mean is situations will touch you. Spirits sometimes will touch you and, and, and your ministry and your leadership styles should mirror that of the Lord Jesus Christ. It should mirror that of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was tangible. He was a tangible Jesus. He wasn't so, you know what I'm saying, far-fetched and so far away that couldn't nobody touch him. He was relatable. He could understand. He could touch the, the faith crises of people. He could touch their illnesses. He could touch their discouragement. He could, he could understand that. And he would speak to that. Amen. And so when we want to pattern ourselves as leaders, for those of you who serve, whether senior leadership or secondary leadership or whatever, praise God, or para leadership, whatever, you know, pattern your ministry and your leadership style after that of the Lord Jesus Christ and be tangible. Again, I don't mean everybody touching you, right? But what I am saying is be relatable. In other words, there may be times, certain times, some things are not to be shared because everybody can't handle certain things, but there will be times when God will require you to tell that story to increase somebody else's faith. So they'll say to themselves, wow, if she went through that and I'm going through that, and I know she know God, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know I'm gonna be all right, amen. Love you guys, have a blessed one.